Hello everybody, this is John coming to you from Cross Lake Sales again. Um, this is a question that I get asked quite a bit. Will these brakes fit on my bike? Um, stick with me and we will go through all the topics of disc brakes. Okay, well we're talking about compatibility with disc brakes. You must have these features on your hubs. You must have something that will accept a rotor. This happens to be a six bolt pattern. This one has, happens to be a center lock pattern. You must have one of these two different kinds in order for disc brakes to work. Now we must pay attention to what we have on our frame to accept calipers, okay? This happens to be a post mount. This goes on a fork. You can find this style on your frame as well. And this happens to be an IS mount. You quite often see these on frames, but you might see this on your fork as well. Or you might see post mount on here. You must have something like this or the thing I showed you on that fork in order for you to run disc brake calipers on your bike. Okay, the first step in compatibility is making sure that your rotors will fit your hubs, okay? This happens to be a six bolt. This happens to be a six bolt rotor. It's a pretty simple concept. You just bolt it in place with those six bolts. This type of a hub is only compatible with six bolt rotors, okay? If I happen to have a center lock rotor, I can't get that to work. Oops, you know, there's no way to attach this, okay? If I have a center lock hub, center lock, center lock hubs are nice because they can do both, okay? I can put this on, spline pattern, put this in place with the lock ring. It's nice, easy. I can get it on with one tool and one tenth the time that it does a six bolt. And I can run with an adapter. This happens to be center lock to six bolt adapter. Goes like that. Oops, there we go. And the lock ring holds it in place. So now I converted this into six bolt. Okay, now that rotor compatibility is out of the way, we're gonna talk about caliper compatibility. Most brakes are gonna be able to fit on your bike. They're, most of them are going to be post mount. Post mount can be recognized by being approximately 70, 74 millimeters apart, center to center for these holes, or three inches, right around there. Okay, if I were to put this on something that was post mount, like this, without anything else, it would be for a 160 millimeter rotor. There might be exceptions, but for the most part, this is the rule. Okay, if I wanted to make it anything else, anything bigger, I would need to have something that would push this caliper further away from the wheel, okay? So this happens to be one of those items. This converts a post mount 160 into a post mount 180. Put it on like that, boom, now you can run 180, 180 millimeter rotors. If you need to run 203, then you would need one made for 203, okay? That's basically post mount. Post mount's really easy to figure out. Okay, now we're going to go move on to IS mount. IS mount can be identified by having two holes 52 millimeters apart, center to center, or approximately two inches. Okay, and as Mac notice, I said before that most brakes are gonna be post mount. You know, this doesn't work, obviously. Okay, so we need a bracket to serve as an intermediary. And this happens to be one of those such things, okay? This happens to be a 160 millimeter rear, and if I were to put this on the front, don't ask me why, it would become 180 millimeter, okay? So what I would do is I would screw this into my frame, and now voila, I have a post mount, just like that, okay? And to talk about these brackets, these ones come in you know, different sizes, and I would recommend staying with the manufacturer if you have a Shimano brake, stay with Shimano, have a Tektro, use a Tektro one. It just makes things a lot simpler. Um, like I said before, this is a 160. If I were to put it on the front, it would become a 180. If this was a 160 front, on the rear, it would become a 140. Okay? Uh, they come in various sizes. Uh, if you want to find one, just search the terms IS to post mount adapter and pick the size that you want to do. Make sure it's you got the right one for the front or the rear for considering the size of your rotor. Go from there. Pretty simple. 
Okay, now that we're done with actually learning how to physically attach brake calipers and stuff to your bike and rotors, um, we're gonna have to pay attention to a couple other things. Uh, they're not too big. Um, if you're running hydraulic lines like this, it's a total pain in the rear to cut it and rebleed it and change the length of this, this line. Um, I recommend not bothering with that. Just find the length you need. If it's not from us, get it from somewhere else. It's, it'll make your life way simpler. So we have no idea how long of a brake line you're gonna need. We, we've never met you. We've never, we've never seen your bike. So what I recommend for you to do is either you can measure the old ones or uh, take an old piece of housing, an old piece of cable, something long enough, and go from where the brake lever will be down to your caliper. Note, note the length, measure it. It's probably going to be somewhere between 700 millimeters and 2,000 millimeters, somewhere in there. Okay, that's that part. Hydraulics are pretty much finished now. Um, the last little note is mechanical. Uh, there are two different kinds of levers. You find them on mountain bikes. Ones that are ran on flat bars tend to be V-brake levers, and V-brake levers pull more cable than road levers. So, if you're trying to run a, a long pull lever, like V-brake levers, they pull more cable, and you can pretty much use whatever kind of mechanical disc brake rotor that you want. This one happens to be a short pull. I, I've used them in conjunction with uh, V-brake levers and short pull calipers. It works just fine. But where you have to watch out is when you're using a road brake, you need to have a short pull caliper because a road, cal road brake will not pull enough cable to activate a normal mechanical disc brake. Uh, this one happens to be sort of a cyclocross one. It's made to be used with road levers. Um, it makes things a lot simpler and it works. Okay, so that's the end of our video. I'm John, we are Cross Lake Sales, and I'm out of here. Have a good time and good luck.